I'd like to welcome you to a very special episode of The Robust Marketer. I'm here at the Porsche Experience Center in Atlanta, actually at the Shopify Mastermind, and I'm here with Jared Getz. So Jared is someone who I met uh, at Traffic and Conversion Summit in San Diego, uh, and he was just such an impressive individual. Uh, he's had a really interesting track record with e-commerce. He is helping a lot of people get into the game and excel at it. He's done a, you've done a, a, a wide range of things in the, in the e-commerce space and you've just been crushing it. Uh, so welcome to The Robust Marketer today, Jared. How are you doing? Well, thanks for having me on. I'm doing great. It's been, uh, it's been a super fun day so far. We're learning so much here at this Shopify event. Yeah, we might. Uh, we'll, maybe we'll get out in some Porsches later and do, go uh, rip around the track. We have to. <laughs> There's cars doing donuts out there on the track. It looks insane. It does. It looks great. And just for my lifestyle videos too, right? I just got to get just shots with me in the Porsche, right? You've, you've got a, what do you have? I have a few cars, but yeah. I have a Lamborghini that's in, like, I, a lot of my ads. I have seen your Lambo in your ads. Yeah. Very nice. Well, we usually start with uh, Marketer Hero's journey. So tell us sort of uh, the nutshell, the two-minute version of, of how you got to where you are today. So, yeah, in a nutshell, I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. You know, I grew up um, not so well off. I always knew I wanted to do something different. So I started in the entertainment space, actually, you know, like, through concerts, actually through the world's largest foam party. So we would hire DJs and... You know, it would be like at arenas, and we had these foam cannons, and it was actually, I did really well when I was 21 years old. Problem was, I didn't really have experience. I ended up losing all my money when I was 22. I got, a, I got sued, so I got a job. Um, long story short, I ended up, I was one of the first people to sell hoverboards. Okay. So uh, we started importing hoverboards. Um, we did really well with that. I saw a lot of potential with e-commerce. Hoverboards are the ones on wheels, right? You're not yeah. talking Back to the Future here. No, You're not. no Back to the Future <laughs> yeah. the, the Those are illegal. Were, they went super viral. Yeah. We worked with a lot of influencers, and we built the hoverboard brand, and we did really well. Uh, so then we started tracing different viral trends. We started selling those inflatable loungers. Yep. You know, you wave them through the air. They the lay up. bags, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. lay on them. And They're great. Them. They're, honestly, like, uh, you talk about, not all e-commerce products are great. That one, I remember I took to a family picnic one time, and it was just, just it was excellent. Incredibly comfortable yeah. product. Yeah. Uh, but then, you know, the problem with importing products and warehousing them and shipping them is just your capital is always tied up in products and it's a, it's a whole thing. It's a lot of work. And yep. I was working 16 plus hours a day, sweating, grinding, you know, blood, sweat, and tears. And I did pretty well. But then I discovered something called drop shipping. And that's when things changed because there's no inventory constraints. You can test tons of different products. And we found a lot of different products that skyrocketed for us in dropshipping. Very cool. Now, and I know you. Uh, one of the one of the really cool things about this space are all the different sort of trademarks that people have, the things that people talk about about how they go about their business. You've coined a term for what you do with dropshipping. Yeah, we call it drop surfing. So basically, you know, we're riding the trends of the internet. We have a software. It's called ehproductfinder.com. Uh, basically, it's a bunch of trending products from all around the internet. They come from video creatives, descriptions, photos, targeting details. And they're trending products, and the, the, you know, in essence, you're riding the wave, so you're drop surfing. So how are you? How are you? Get, get, so this is your own product. This is a software tool that people could sign up for as well. Yeah, it comes for free with our course, or you can sign up. It's forty-seven bucks a month. Very cool. And it's and what does it source? Does it source AliExpress data? Does it use their API or it scrapes essentially? Yeah, we're using uh, AI, and we also have a team of people that are finding products from all around the internet and adding it to this database. We add about five new products per day. Uh, and we are, yeah, we're linking to AliExpress and some of our own suppliers. Very cool. So the, th the thing that I'm really interested in is, is that you've been in the now dropshipping game for, for a year or two, basically? Uh, about a year and a half. About a year and a half. So in that time, from when you started to where it is now, what are some of the key things that you've seen that have changed? A lot has changed with Facebook ads. You know, it's ch things change with Facebook all the time. Yeah. Um, you have to be a little bit more savvy now. It used to be much easier. You could throw something up there and, you know, you, can be a little bit less sophisticated and still be profitable. Now, you know, you have to be uh, smoother with your audiences, the, you know, your retargeting has to be on point and, you know, it's a lot more competitive. There's a lot of people coming on. But at the same time, with more people coming into the space, there's more people dropping off. So it kind of counterbalances. Interesting. Uh, and also, you, you know, we've started diversifying our traffic a lot more too. It used to be like all Facebook. Now we're, you know, we're spending on Google, Pinterest, you know, across the board. What does your ad mix look like? So, so pick a, a, a product. So say, pick one of your products, your winning product, whatever that is. 
Uh, what's your what's your ad mix on that one right now? We're still about seventy percent on Facebook, yeah. but Google Shopping is really good. Google Shopping is better around the holidays or around you know a time when people are buying gifts because it's an intent based platform. Yeah, people go on to buy something. It's sort of a no brainer. Like it's it's amazing that more people don't at least have a presence on that because it's just it's a it's a CPA deal, right? You're just selling it. You people you're getting people in the right part in the funnel. Ernest Epps was on the podcast talking about about that. Right. Well, the thing is, not many people know about it so mm. much because not many you know e-commerce marketers and influencers teach Google Shopping. So it's, yeah. it's still kind of new to the entry-level e-commerce people. That's interesting. So so uh, what about influencers? Are you leveraging them much still? Because that's funny, you came, in, you came into the game kind of backwards in the way, right? You came into it through doing the hard work of warehousing and uh, you know you, you did the hard stuff first and then, then you back, then you already had the hard skills and so the soft skills of dropshipping were a lot easier. Yeah, well we actually, we started with influencers because we found these, these hoverboards and it was yeah. before anyone had ever seen them so they were incredible. Everyone wanted to get involved. So we learned how to market with influencers. Then we started selling the inflatable loungers, the Dumbo lounge sacks, and we didn't yet have the influencer deals in place, so we experimented with Facebook ads. Yeah. And over the course of about six months, we got really good at the Facebook ads, and over the course of a year, we got really good at it. So then when it came to drop shipping, we were already really good with Facebook ads, so we kind of just stuck with that. Yeah. Influencer marketing and drop shipping, it works, but it's more, you're, you're kind of just paying for shout outs and hoping that you get a positive return on investment. Yeah. It's not extremely scalable, uh, and you're not building brand equity. So Unless you are, right? Like, it, 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 if you're if you're drop, you know, you know what I mean. Like, I feel like influencer marketing is better for when you are trying to build brand equity, right? Right, because having those assets, having people back your product. If you're yeah. building a brand, it makes sense to have people who are you know influential yeah. push the product. But for drop shipping, like trending products, influencer marketing's you know not the most effective. So when you do a trending product store, do you like what, do you categorize what you do as a general store, as a niche store, or as a general niche store? Uh, we, we always say that you should start with a general store yeah. so that you're not limited to anything. Uh, once something starts taking off, definitely it's encouraged to go ahead and you know start sourcing them locally or, or warehousing those products and build a brand. But when just you know you want to just try a lot of things and see what works. Your right? niche is sort of in this case trending, right? It's sort of gadgets trending like that's sort of like I, I think of general niche as like a kitchen store, right? Like that you know you're 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 doing general products within a niche of kitchen. Yours is broader, I guess, because it's whatever's trending. I mean, we we sold, you know, millions of dollars worth of spy cameras and millions of dollars worth of push-up bras. On the same store. On the same store. That's so, interesting. So you know, I would say it's as general as it gets. That is interesting. So what? So w the one of the the, the the tough things I've heard about general stores. Uh, is the repeat customer rate? What's how are you, what are some things you do? How is your repeat customer rate? And then what are some things you do to, to get that? Yeah. So with drop shipping, as opposed to building a brand, you're not going to have the same kind of lifetime value with the customers. Uh, drop shipping is kind of like the easiest and most cost-effective way to get into e-commerce. Yeah. You're, it's the less you know least capital-intensive way. Uh, so you know customers. They're more impulse buyers. I mean, of course, you should be collecting emails. On one of our stores, we have you know about 330,000 emails, and it generates us quite a bit of money. But when you have a brand that people love, you're going to get customers that come back more. It's a, it's a different business model. It is. So you're really not focused on that. So when you say retargeting, you're, ma you're mainly talking about bringing people in uh, who aren't buying. You're retargeting people who aren't buying more that you're less right. you're not really targeting people who've already bought with new things right but you could use your audience list to make lookalikes and then sell them different products that are in the same realm but would you go so far as to even exclude the audiences that actually have already bought from you uh no 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 they, some, they will because there, there will be repeat, we customers. Do have repeat customers yeah for sure it's just not as if we were you know a, a loved brand it's not a central part of the of the model really right yeah exactly Exactly. That makes sense. Okay, cool. So when you say you say you guys are really good at Facebook ads, what are some of the the things that you've learned uh, that make you really good at Facebook ads? These are things that I think there's a, there's a lot of information out about how to be good with Facebook ads. A lot of courses out there. But what are some of the key insights you have that have made you really effective with Facebook ads? Well, like I'm sure most people say, testing is key. Yeah. Um, number one, it comes down to your creative. You can be the best Facebook marketer. You can know all the tricks, techniques. You know all the technicalities. You can have the best landing page ever. But if your video or photo is not attractive, you're not going to make sales, or you're yeah. not going to make you know optimal sales at an optimal price. So your creative is number one. If you have a great creative targeted to a totally broad audience, you'll make sales. If you have a bad creative targeted to like the perfect audience, you're not going to really make sales. That's interesting. So most people are, are focused so much on the technical stuff. I mean, for example, there was a product that we sold about three million dollars worth of, and we tested six different videos. 
And out of those six videos, five of them weren't profitable. So had we not tested the sixth video, we never would have sold any of the product, we would have stopped. Very but interesting. that one video was very profitable for us on the same product. And then do you know what the, what the key element that you did differently in that video? Was it very product specific or was there something that you did in that video that made it go more than the others? Uh, it was just a very simple use, you know, quick 30 second video showing the product. It wasn't sophisticated, no motion graphics, you know, nothing high tech. It was just a very simple showing of the product. Oh, but But you would, it wasn't what you thought. Like if I had showed you all six, you wouldn't have been like, that's the one. That's definitely the winning, but we don't know, so you need to test. You just gotta test. I like the tip that um, was given in there by Tommy, Tommy Powers, I think his name was, uh, about, the, about just testing the first five seconds, like literally just remix your video so that you have a bunch of different f five seconds on the front of your video to see which, are the, which, which, which five seconds are gonna be the, the ones that hook. Yeah, well, and he was talking specifically about in YouTube ads, yeah. because people can skip after five seconds. That's right. So the first five seconds need to catch your attention and make you not wanna click that skip button. That's right. So if you could test different variations. Did you, do you guys do much in YouTube or? Uh, we're starting to. Yeah. We're doing more in YouTube in the info space than in the e-commerce space. Yeah, especially after this, uh, there's been a bunch of people giving a lot of really good, uh, information on, on YouTube for sure. So it's got me really hyped up to try it as well. I'm excited to, to uh, yeah, you know, keep exploring the best of the best people out there, keep learning more, and, uh, and really take the YouTube to the next level. Nice, well if you had to give a, you know, a, 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 a tip to our audience. So, so think of our audience, we've got, a, we've got a broad cross section of people who are getting into e-commerce, but we also have a, a number of people with, with higher volume stores. What, what, what's, a, what's one tip you'd, you'd give to, to, to this group? Um, so, is the audience more new people or more go, experienced? Go more experienced. Go more experienced for this one, because I think you, you've, you're operating at a pretty high level. Yeah, for more experienced people, you know, keep creating more ad assets. Keep making, you know, keep taking new photos, keep making more videos, and keep testing them with different audiences, because, you know, the littlest change can make a difference in your CPA, which can allow you to scale to the moon and back. So, I would say, you know, even if you're doing well with a video, don't be satisfied with that video and just keep running it. Keep trying and keep investing money in more and more uh, creative assets. Nice. Uh, now, so j let's talk a little bit about creative assets for a second. So you use video off the start generally. Is that, is that how you're using, you're using video for engagement essentially? Yeah, video for the cold traffic, photos more for retargeting. For retargeting. What about ad text, long form, short form? Um, I, for products, for e-commerce products, yeah. a nice short ad text normally works best. Just like a little bit of information about the product with a, you know, get it here and an arrow to a bit.ly link has worked for us. Whereas for info, you'll experiment probably more with longer text. You need something that touches a person's heart with info, you know, something that really can, that they can relate to. Nice. Now, personally for me, give me your best tip for info product marketing. I know, I know we've sort of been in it a similar amount of time. You've, you've done extremely well. You've got some cool projects lined up. You're, you're doing really well with your course. Give, give me your best tip for, for info marketing. I mean, as with any business, you wanna find something that works and you wanna model it. So my info business is kind of a mix between two or three other people that I know well that have very successful info businesses. And we've taken the best elements of each of them and we've combined it into our own business now. So just find what works and model it. That, you know, don't copy it, but, but utilize the same strategies that are working. And, that, and that's, it's funny, because that's, that's, you know, we're at this mastermind where everyone's sharing their best tips on, on info marketing, really, and it's, like, so, and, and it's funny because there's the top 50 Shopify info marketers you know, at this event, and they're all willing to share with each other because we're only 50 people, and there's a billion, you know, there's seven billion other. Scarce, don't have that scarce yeah. mindset, right? You, yeah. like, we gotta have an abundant mindset. There's tons of, of customers out there. Like, you can't be the clo like, I don't wanna share my secrets. Yeah. No. Like, if everyone helps each other, we'll all win. And ideally, and, and you know, the, when, when we're happiest and doing the best job, we're also helping other people win. Uh, because we don't really win unless we create a lot of like positive transformation for other people as well. I, exactly, we're actually enabling people, we're, we're kind of pushing people past their fears to try things. Nice. So, yeah, it's leaving good impact. This is one thing that, that, uh, that every person I talk to in this industry, and, and you especially, I think, uh, talking to you, is it's, it's this lack of limitations. It's sort of something the way about your mindset where you don't really place limitations on what's possible. Has that something you've always had, or is that something you've sort of had to, have you, have you really had to push hard against uh, boundaries? That's a good question. I mean, I think we're all programmed with like beliefs about ourselves that, that do limit us. But as you keep pushing further and further and further, your standards get higher and higher. So as you start making more and more money, you're never gonna revert back. Mm. So, you know, I don't really like 
you know, I'm, I'm kind of realistic when it comes to like different business models and how high they can go. You know, info businesses, you're probably not going to get into the nine figures with, but you know, high yeah. eight figures is great. Um, but I think, you know, with the right people, with the right product, you can, uh, you know, as long as you put a little bit in every single day, you're going to have outcomes that are higher than you expect. Very, very cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for the uh, the mini cast here. Yeah. And I look forward to the rest of the mastermind. I look forward to some uh, drinks and dinner at uh, Ch Chago de Fao tonight. Ch is that how you pronounce it? I don't even know. <laughs> Should be good either way. Cheers, brother. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.